Okay, in this video I want to deal with some more negative things uh, with radical expressions. So negatives inside the radical, negative outside the radical. How do those sort of uh, resolve themselves? So let's, let's look at one here first. So if I take the negative of the square root of 64, so the square root happens first, right? The radical acts like an exponent, right? In our PEMDAS stuff, radicals and exponents are, are happening at the same time. So the square root happens before the subtraction happens. So this should be a negative 8, right? The, the square root happens, I get the 8, and then the negative happens after the radical happens. If I try and take, say, the, the cube root, the negative cube root of, say, 27, right? 27 is 3 cubed, so this is this is a 3 because the radical happens first and then the negative happens. The, the, the cube root of negative 27, that's also negative 3, right? Because I, I can take odd roots of negative values, right? And if I have an odd root of a negative value, that negative is going to stick around. I can think of this negative 27 as negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Let's put parentheses in there so it looks like I'm multiplying negative values together. This is negative 27. So the number that I would have to multiply by itself three times to get to negative 27 is negative 3. So uh, if you have a negative inside of a radical, so I've got this radical and I've got some value here, um, and this is odd. If this is an odd number, if this is the same thing as the radical with that same n value uh, and the negative on the inside. So those negative signs, they can move in and out of odd things, right? If I have, uh, say, an even guy up there, here's e this is an even number, and I've got x, and I've got a negative on the outside. I can't move the negative inside because negatives on the inside, they they don't work on even radicals, right? The the square root that if this was a two, it'd be the square root. The fourth root if it was a four, you can't take square roots or fourth roots or sixth roots of negative values because I can't multiply an even number of things together and end up with a negative, right? And if you have an even number of negative signs, they just disappear. So, so this negative sign just sticks around. The only way you can keep that negative sign around is write it the exact same way. Um, and, right, if I have a negative on the inside and I've got an even power, this only works when x itself is negative, right? So that the negative and the negative on the x, they would cancel each other out, and I'm taking an even root of something positive, right? So I can only take even roots of positive things. Okay. That leads me into... Um, the the next bit of this where we're gonna find domains remember when we were dealing with rational expressions we can't divide by zero dividing by zero is illegal so I have to avoid those things by saying that the domain doesn't contain them well I've got similar issues with these radicals now right if I have a radical expression say I have f of x equals the square root of x the things that I can't put into here I can't put negative numbers in here can't put negative numbers in. So we have to avoid those by removing them from the domain. So we're going to find domains of, uh, of radical expressions now, right? And if you, if you think about how we did it with uh, rational expressions, the fractions, what we did was we, we figured out what would make the denominator equal to zero, and then we removed them from the domain. So we're going to do that with this. We're going to say, let's say, let's say g of x is the square root of x plus 3. We want to find the domain. Okay, so we want to figure out what we can't put in. We, we need, 
x plus 3 to be bigger than or equal to 0, right? So we need to figure out which numbers of x will cause x plus 3, the stuff that's inside that radical, to be bigger than or equal to 0. And this is easy to solve. We're just going to subtract 3 from both sides. So x is bigger than or equal to negative 3. This is my domain. These are the good things. This is the stuff that we can actually put into the function. Um, with with the rational expressions, what we did was we found the the bad things and we threw them away. Here with these, we can find the good things directly. So we don't actually have to find the bad things and throw them away. Okay. Uh, so let's let's do another one. Let's do um, say I've got g of x is equal to the square root of four minus two x. And we want to figure out which numbers are good in this function. So again, we want 4 minus 2x to be bigger than or equal to 0, right? Because those are the things that I can put bigger than or equal to 0 numbers into square roots. Those are the, those are the good guys. So now I need to solve this. Um, the thing that I don't like when I'm solving these is I don't like negative coefficients on my variable. So how do I avoid dealing with that? There's there's rules about if you multiply by a negative or something, you flip the sign. Well, I, I, I don't like to remember rules very often, so I, I go back to the very basic stuff, and subtraction and addition is the very basic stuff. So I'm going to add 2x to this side, I'm going to add 2x to this side, and that gets rid of my minus sign, right? I've got just 4 on this side, there's no minus sign. Over here, I've got a 2x on this side, and in some sense, it moved it over and it flipped the sign by just moving it over to the other side. But now I can divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, 2 is bigger than or equal to x, and this is my domain. Let's, let's check a few numbers. Um, so I need a number that is smaller than 2, right? 2 is bigger than the x value, so if I put in, say, negative 5, well, if I take g of negative 5, I get the square root of 4 minus 2 times negative 5. So that's the square root of 4 minus negative 10, which is the square root of 14. That's that's a perfectly valid entry. So it checks out. We checked ourselves. We have the right we have the right domain. Okay, let's do one more with a quadratic. Um, so Let's say I have h of x equals the square root of um, x squared minus 3x, uh, let's go minus 4. And I want to find out when this thing is uh, a valid expression. Okay, so if we recall how quadratics work, I'm going to draw a picture here. And we're going to have a parabola, and this parabola is going to open up or down, right? Um, so let's let's figure out where the roots are. And it's an x squared, so it's going to open up because it's got a positive coefficient on that x squared. But let's let's factor this. This is going to be an x, and it's going to be a, a minus four and an x plus one. So that means in this quadratic, my roots of the quadratic they are uh, positive 4 and negative 1. So I'm going to put those on my graph. Here's, here's the root at negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to have a root at negative 1. We're going to have a root at uh, positive 4. And this quadratic is going to open up. I don't really care how far down it goes or anything, but I do know that it opens up. Okay. Things that are good inside of this this radical are are anything that's zero or bigger, right? So if I look at this this graph, and I want to know when the output of this quadratic is bigger than or equal to zero, I'm going to look at the x-axis and I'm going to look up, right? Anything up here is going to be a good output of the of the quadratic for the radical. 
I'm going to figure out that I have a positive number here and then I'm going to put that positive number inside the radical and we're going to be we're going to be just fine. So I have to figure out when the green stuff is in the area is the green curve is in the blue area. And so let's let's see if we can figure out when that happens. Well that happens when I use x values on this part of the input axis, the x axis, or I use x values on that part of the uh, the x axis. So remember this was at negative 1 and this was at 4. So what I want is I want any value between negative infinity and negative 1. And I can include negative 1 because if I put in a negative 1 I get a 0 and 0 is okay under the radical. I want that stuff and I also want the stuff from 4 off into infinity. So that's the domain. This is the domain of this h of x. Okay. One last thing really quick now that we have domains. Let's look at what the shape of these graphs look like. So let's look at just the graph of the two basic square root and the cube root. Okay, so the square root of x, the graph of that, it's going to start at the origin and it's going to come up and go this way. It's a half of a parabola that's on its side, right? So I've got like this point here, which is a 1, 1. I've got this point here, which is at, say, 4, 2. If I put in 4 into the square root function, I get 2 out. If I put 1 into the square root function, I get 1 out. I can't put negative numbers in, so there's nothing over on this side. Um, I never get negatives out, so there's nothing down here. It looks like this this parabola, this quadratic that's on its side, but I only take the top half of it. So that's f of x. g of x, it'll be similar again. I'm going to take... Oh, I should probably say that, well, this starts at the origin, it starts at 0, 0. Just like this cube root, we have, we have a point at the origin. If I go over 1, the cube root of 1, it's still 1. Right? I have to go over to 8 before I get up to 2. So I'm going to be over at 8, 2, the cube root of 8 is 2. And then I get the negative of those things here. So if I put in negative 1, I get negative 1 out. If I put in negative 8, I get negative 2 out. Okay, So this, it's sort of shaped like a parabola with like a twist in it and it comes back the other way. So this this is the cube root function. If you remember what the cube function looks like, it's like the cube function only rotated and flipped, right? So these are the shape, the basic shape of our radical graphs. Alright, that's all for 7.1. I'll, I'll see you next time for 7.2.